Well, a couple of weeks ago, we started this uh, series, uh, which I've simply called The Path, and I mentioned previously, it's based on, uh, out of Proverbs, but it's based on Andy Stanley's book called The Principle of the Path. And uh, there's an unbreakable principle that uh, is in the universe. If you try to break this principle, it'll kind of break you, all right? So here's the principle of the path, and it goes something like this. The principle of the path is that your direction determines your destination. Your direction determines your destination. Then we went a little bit further and we talked about the fact that it's not what you hope would happen, it's not what you wanted to happen to you, it's actually your direction, not your intention that determines your destination. And the way that we described that last time, I said if you, it doesn't matter if you want to go skiing in the Victorian Alps, if you are on the Bruce Highway and you're heading north, you're sooner or later going to get, can- to get to Cairns and you're not going to get down to Mount Buller, okay? Because even though your intention is to go skiing, snow skiing, by the way, if you're heading in that direction, north, it's never going to make a difference. Your de- dest- destination is determined by your direction, not by your intentions. And that kind of principle is not rocket science, it's not brain surgery, it just kind of makes sense, doesn't it? For Anyone make sense? Good, okay, good, just checking. And uh, we know that when it comes to geography, and we know that when it comes to, you know, getting on the road, but somehow it doesn't make sense to us when it comes to life principles. For some reason, when it comes to areas of our life like relationships or finances or morality or eating habits or exercise and developing skills that make us more competent and valuable, we often walk one way with the hope of finding a different pathway to go. We'll come back. What have I done there? There we go. All right. Can you go back to the beginning for me, please? Thank you. (laughs) I don't want to give you a preview of too much of it right at the very beginning, all right? Your direction, not your intention, not your hopes, not your dreams, determines your destination. Now, I want to take you to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. There we go. Solomon, the primary author of Proverbs, tells us that Proverbs is written for what? For attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight. Okay, that's why it was written for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. life. Anyone use prudent in their vocabulary in the last week or so in a conversation? <laughs> Probably not. For giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. The word prudent and prudence is mentioned twice in those two verses. And to be prudent means knowing what to do, it means exercising good judgment, it means having common sense. The reason the book of Proverbs is written so that you would become prudent and have prudence. Now, we don't use that word very much, but the book of Proverbs uses it a lot. In fact, Solomon compares and contrasts prudent people with a second group of people. You know what they are? Simple people. We've got prudent people and simple people. Whatever you are, you don't want to be in that group called simple people, okay? You want to be in the prudent group, am I right? Just, okay, good. In Proverbs, later in Proverbs, Solomon says this, flog a mocker and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke a discerning man and he will gain knowledge. In other words, some people learn by verbal instruction. A friend points out something they're doing wrong and they learn from it. But other people, simple people, have to be whipped or beaten to get, to a, to get a lesson. Okay? In another place in, in Proverbs, Solomon says this, A fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. Simple people let their emotions get the better of them. They get mad and they go into a rage and they sprout off and they complain when things don't go their way. But prudent people know how to control themselves and to take things in their stride. You don't want to be in the simple people group. You want to be in the prudent group. Here's another one. A simple man believes anything, but a prudent man gives thoughts to his, thought to his steps. Simple people get fooled easily. 
prudent people use their brains. Can you imagine if we mastered prudence? <laughs> Life would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? No more scams, <laughs> phone calls. <laughs> One more. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Proverbs 22, verse 3. Why don't we say this one out aloud? You ready? The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Now look at this one. That's Proverbs 22, verse 3. 20, Proverbs 27, verse 12. Let's read it as well. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. It's the same verse. The same one. It's in there twice. Now, was that a typing error? Was uh, somebody who, you know, they obviously got the wrong page in the wrong place or something? I don't think so. <laughs> I think God put it in the book of Proverbs because he wanted us to learn it. <laughs> he wants us to know it. He wants us to put it into practice in our life. Here's where the serious learning starts. If last time we learned that our path is of paramount importance, then the logical question is, how do we choose the right path? Right? If the path we're on and the direction we're on is of paramount importance, then the next question really is to say, well, how do I get onto the right path? How do I choose the right path? How do you figure out what path you should be on? Or in some cases, how do you work out how to get off the path that you're already on? How do we make a course correction? And this proverb is telling us the primary difference between the prudent and the simple is not what they see, but how they respond to what they see. Have a look at it. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Both of them see the danger, but one responds, or they, they respond in different ways. The prudent take refuge, but the simple do what? Just keep going on that same path. One responds by changing course, the other keeps going and hopes that the danger will never arrive. It's like the ostrich who's put his head in the sand and he said, if it can't see me, if I can't see it, it can't see me. It's like our kids when they were really young. Yeah, they used to put their hands over their eyes and say, you can't see me, I've got my eyes closed. That's simple. <laughs> it's simple. You can see why Solomon calls people like this simple. So how do you choose the right path? Well, the first thing is that prudent make course, direction, uh, course corrections. Let's go to that one. Prudent make course corrections. I don't know if you've ever watched a surf race, uh, surf swimmers, an Ironman race or something like that, where the swimmers have to swim out through the breakers and they swim to a buoy out beyond the breakers where they have to turn and then probably swim over to another boy. And, and I've watched a number of those at, at various times through my life and, and most swimmers when they're swimming through the surf they're keeping their head up and they're looking to where that boy is. They're watching that but every now and then you see one swimmer who's just going for it. They put their head down and they're swimming like crazy not realizing that the tide is drifting them away. And when they finally poke their head up to look where the boy is they've drifted off the path and they're so far away from where they want to go, they've got to swim a lot further. You see, wouldn't it make far more sense to be watching where you're going to go and making little corrections along the way so that you can get to the destination that you intend? The prudent make course corrections. It's a little more complicated in life because, but part, but part of choosing the right path is actually getting off the wrong path. This behavior, this habit, this relationship, this you name it, if it's leading you somewhere that's going to hurt, then I'm saying you ought to be getting off that path. If the path that you're on in your life is leading you to somewhere that's going to cost you in a bad way, <laughs> Doesn't it make sense to actually get off that path now onto a different one? Unlike the prudent, 
the simple keep right on going. When a prudent person senses that a relationship is moving in an unhealthy direction, they do something. The simple just keep going with that relationship. (laughs) When a prudent person sees trouble on their financial horizon, they do something. The simple just keep spending. (laughs) When a prudent person realizes that God is the most important person in the universe and their relationship with them isn't growing... They do something about it. The simple just keep doing whatever they're doing that took their time away from God. Just so we're clear, the second half of the proverb says, the simple keep going and pay the penalty for it. Penalty for what? For refusing to act on what they see. They pay the penalty because they see no connection between their actions now and the experiences of tomorrow. They overlook the fact that every path has a destination and there's always a cost for keeping on going on a wrong path. There's always a cost. And here's the really sad part about not making course directions. Not only does the simple person themselves pay the penalty, but a lot of people around them also pay the penalty for that choice. The following scenario describes how the simple react to problems. So just imagine this conversation. Oh, you know that's probably going to be a problem. I really ought to... Well, are you going to do something about it? No, I'm probably just going to keep going. But don't you see? Yeah. Shouldn't you do something about it? Yeah, I should. You're right. You're right. I should. What are you going to do? Nothing. Just keep going. Well, don't you see? Yeah, I probably should stop that. I should. I'm not arguing with you. Well, what are you going to do? Just keep going. (laughs) See, the simple thinks that I'm going to drive towards the wall, but when I get there, I won't hit the wall. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to keep going, and when I get there, it's just going to work out. Something will happen, or I'll think of something when I get there. Really? Yeah. Don't you think, yeah, but I'm not going to do that. (laughs) The simple just keep going. You would hate to be called simple, wouldn't you? If you're 30 years old or 50 years old or 15 years old and you see a problem in the future because of your path, you need to get off that path. It doesn't matter what age you are. If you don't get off that path when you can see trouble ahead, you are simple. You're in that simple group. A parent notices that their son or daughter tends to talk back, lose their temper, and as they grow a little older, they do the same thing to a teacher or a coach, and the parent thinks, when they grow up, this could be a problem. A concerned grandparent says, I'm worried about that. And mum says, yeah, me too. But figuring out how to positively and encouragingly teach their child how to submit and take direction, well, that's, that's hard work. Difficult. So they don't do anything. They hope that luck and unanticipated circumstances, their little hothead will grow out of his or her temper and hissy fits. But the child goes up, grows up, goes from job to job because he can't keep his mouth shut, keeps getting fired. A 20-something knows that he's gaining a little weight, but hey, well, that's what happens in your 20s, doesn't it? You know, your metabolism slows down a little bit, but your appetite doesn't. And a friend says, you know, when you're 40, that could be a problem. I know, but... <laughs> And when they're 40, it is a problem. At 46, after their first coronary, do they decide to change their diet and change their lifestyle, but the damage is already done. A couple thinks, we need to get on a budget. We need to figure out how, how, where our money is going so we can give more to God and give more to others and be more generous and then have some leftovers so that when we retire, we're able to, to do some things that we want to do. And then the bling catches their eye. And besides, budgeting is so mundane... So they drive towards the wall, hoping something miraculous will happen just before they hit. (laughs) You see, the prudent (laughs) see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. So how do you choose the right path? Here's the key. Prudent people know that it's not what they see that makes a difference. It's what they do. Prudent people do things. 
How do you make a course direction? You do something, you take action, you step off a path and you get on another one. It's almost hard because we are creatures of habit, we are creatures of momentum. We naturally continue what we've been used to doing in the past. If we're used to overeating, overeating feels natural. (laughs) If we're used to losing our temper, then losing our temper is natural to us. If we're used to online chat rooms or indiscreet pictures, that's what we're used to. And momentum carries us in the same direction. So to change direction means you almost always have to give up something. (laughs) And here's the corollary to what we're saying. When you see danger, it almost always requires sacrifice. Almost always requires sacrifice, which is why we don't do it. And this is where it gets a little ironic. When prudent people act, they often look foolish. They do things that others aren't doing. They they swim against the stream. They act as if then is now and change course before the wall ever hits them and they ever hit the wall. And so when you behave prudently, you usually suffer embarrassment. And the reason for that is because nobody else is doing what you're doing. You're out on your own. Everybody else thinks you're strange. Everybody else makes fun of the fact that you have some rules with when it comes to the opposite sex because of your spending habits or because of your refusal to watch certain TV programs or to download certain apps onto your phone. Everyone thinks you're strange. You you don't fit in with everybody else. So if you're going to make a course direction, usually it means you're going to suffer some kind of embarrassment or isolation from others. I know with our kids, our children never had a mobile phone until they started driving on their own, until they got their (laughs) licence. One of the few in their class that didn't have a mobile phone. It's tough when you take a stand. You know what's kind of funny about this proverb? It's the exact story mum told us when we were kids. Did you ever, your mum ever read you the story of the three little pigs? Okay. Didn't know you were going to hear a fairy tale this morning, did you? You remember the story, one builds his house out of straw, the other builds his house out of sticks. The big bad wolf comes along and he huffs and he puffs and he... You know the story. (laughs) Solomon would call these two simple pigs. Simple pigs. The third little pig, he was a prudent pig. He built a house out of bricks. Why? Because he saw danger coming and he built a refuge. We all know that life is going to bring us challenges, don't we? When, when we recover from this pandemic, when we recover from this economic turn down, Uh, There will be some up for years, but then there's going to be another turn when it goes down again. We know that. If you're married, some kind of uh, challenge will stretch and strain your relationship at some point. Prudent people know that and they don't take their marriages for granted. They work on them in the good times so they've got more strength in the more difficult times. Let me give you what I see as five top areas that you need to monitor in your life to see if you're staying on the right path. First one is spiritual, relational, moral, physical, and financial. And I think they're in that order too. And I think we ought to be monitoring these areas of our life consistently as we're walking this destina- or walking towards this destination. How's your spiritual life? How's your relationship with God? Nobody gets to their deathbed wishing they had more money. They might wish they had a better body so they could live longer. They might have wished that they lived more morally so people would think better of them. Almost everyone on their deathbed wishes they had more time with family and friends. But there's very few people who get to their deathbed and don't want to be right with God or at least wonder about it. Imagine if all of us in this room loved God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength like the Bible says he wants us to. Imagine how great a place this would be 
as each of us is becoming more and more like God in character, our church would be a little reflection of heaven. I can only imagine what it would be like. By the way, I think we're pretty close. I think we've got to grow. Let's monitor our walk with God. Let's monitor our spiritual aspects because everything else on that list flows from number one. How's the intimacy of your relationship with God? And if it's not where you want to be, what course correction are you going to make? What are you going to change in your life to make it a little bit different? The prudent see danger and take refuge. Imagine if your reputation, your morals and what people thought of you was exactly what you'd like them to think of you. One guy said, my goal in life is to become the man my dog thinks I am. <laughs> Imagine if we were those men and women. Look at that list. Spiritual, relational, moral, physical, financial. Let's not waste another moment of our life walking down a path that's leading to a destination we don't want to go. Let's not spend another moment of our life going in a direction with a destination that's going to be damaging to us and hurtful to us and painful for us. The prudent see danger and take refuge. They get off the wrong path. And they get on the right path. They make course corrections. They don't just think about it or worry about it. They do it. What correction do you need to make in your life this morning? What, what is God saying to you this morning? What's he put his fi- putting his finger on in your heart and in your spirit or in your life with him at the moment? What is it that he's highlighted in your mind? I said to you at the beginning of today, I don't know why God what God wants to say to you this morning but I believe he wants to speak to you and I believe he is talking and those things that are coming to your mind maybe just need a slight correction a deviation to get back to that boy that you're swimming towards maybe they mean getting off this path completely and getting on a completely different path but if the destination is dangerous painful it's hurtful you've got to change direction your next steps this week are the same three we covered last time and i'm going to add one more Uh, first of all come back next week (laughs) because next week i'm going to tell you why sometimes we have such a hard time seeing what the right path really is Uh, this is kind of the, the crux of this series Why is it so difficult? Keep reading through the book of Proverbs. I'm not sure how many of you are doing. Some of you have mentioned to me, I've been reading a a chapter a day. 31 verses, uh, chapters in the book of Proverbs. 31 days mostly in in most um, months. Join a small group. Get involved in a small group. It's a number of them that meet each week. It's in a small group that you find others who are walking that path as well and can help to keep you accountable for the change of directions that you need to make and finally make some sort of course correction in your life if the holy spirit has highlighted something this morning in your mind listen to him (laughs) but don't just listen to him the prudent do something do something Let's pray. Father, we don't want to be called simple, but when we look at our life far too often, that's exactly what we've been. We've, we've known that the pathway we're on is not the right pathway. We've known that the things that we're doing, our habits that we've got, the things that we might watch or the relationship that we're in is... is not leading us down the destination that we, to the destination we want to go. But we don't do anything about it. So help us this morning, we pray, to be men and women of action, to do something. 
It's when we do something, Father, we can change course, get on a different path, the one that you've laid out for us that leads to eternal life. We thank you in your name. Amen.